What's the best way to prepare your body for climbing? Today, we're gonna to cover a simple but super effective three-step warm-up that requires just a few minutes of your time, a single TheraBand, and it's backed by science. So the warm-up we're gonna talk about today is going to use our understanding of anatomy to target important muscle groups and tendons related to climbing. It's gonna stimulate neural activity, increase oxygen uptake, and improve activation potential of those muscles, and it's gonna take less than 10 minutes. Now, because this is the internet. What the f is the internet? I gotta start by saying that while I think these are the three optimal exercises to do before climbing, that does not mean they're the only things you can do. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about beta and share beta with one another. Everyone has their own opinions, routines, and rituals for warming up, and that's great. This is a site populated by militant gym climbers, sad, incredibly fit bastards living in their parents' basement, downloading mountain project, what they think is good directions. Warm up number one, hand and forearm soft tissue and joint mobility. So my suggestion for your first warm up activity is tenon gliding. Tenon gliding is so easy. It can be done when you're walking to the crag or where you're driving to the gym. I like to think about it as picking three rows and touching the pads of your fingers to each row with using as much range of motion as possible. So you pick the three rows of your hand, the top of the palm, middle, and the bottom of your palm. You fully flex your fingers to try and touch the pad of your fingers to the first row, open them all the way back up, go to the second and third, and repeat. When you go to that third row, you want to make that L position as you try and touch the base of your palm. Just do 10 repetitions on each hand. A repetition is gonna to involve touching all three rows. Now, for a little extra credit on this and to make it even more worthwhile, two things. One, let's put some effort into it. So as you're going and squeezing and making that fist and opening back up, actually squeeze and open as hard as you can. Don't just kind of gingerly go through this motion. That's not gonna do as much, okay? The second extra credit part is gonna to be to actually move your wrist as you do this as well. So when you curl your fingers or flex them down, move your fist with it. As you open back up, extend that wrist back. Curling down, flex the wrist. Opening up, extend it back. All right, so why do we actually even do tendon gliding? Well, primarily tendon gliding causes movement of the flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis. These are the two main muscles and tendons that we use while climbing. The flexor digitorum profundus has the most force on it during crimps, and the flexor digitorum superficialis is a lot more active with slopers. Tendon gliding will also improve your joint mobility, and I'm sure some of you out there can attest to the fact that climbing has done some work on your joints, and improving that joint mobility is probably gonna be a good thing for you. All right, so all that's pretty cool, right? Is there anything else? Why, yes. Tendon gliding has also been shown to force the extensor tendons to activate and glide as well, as we mentioned with the wrist mobility part. So like for those of you who've had lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow before, you can test that climbing, yeah, it puts a lot of stress on the extensor muscles. So giving them a nice little warm up and getting the tendons moving before climbing for the extensor group is going to be beneficial. All right, we gotta be done with the tendon gliding section, right? There can't be anything else that does. Wrong. Tendon gliding also helps activate the intrinsic muscles in the hand as you go through that L position. So you get to warm up those small muscles in the hand as well. All of that just with tendon gliding. Why would you not do it? By the way, like each section of this has an additional research on the show notes. I just didn't wanna pull all of that into the video to make it too long. So if you're interested in more research, please go ahead and check out the website for the show notes. <sighs> Warm up number two, getting the shoulder external rotators ready to go. To do that, we're gonna simply do some no monies. <sighs> Basically, just grab a resistance band with both hands. I prefer palms up. Squeeze the shoulder blades down and back together and rotate the arms out. I usually say don't go more than like 45 to 60 degrees out. So say your band is a little bit too light and you're going way far out there, either choke up or make it a little bit harder so the resistance stops you at that about 45 to 60 degree angle. 
I recommend doing about two sets of this, maybe three of 10 to 12 repetitions in each set. Okay, so why do I choose no monies for our shoulder warm up? Well, quite simply, it engages both the scapular retractor and external rotation muscle groups, and it engages them together, creating synergy between those two muscle groups. This is gonna help create stability in the shoulder and share the forces between the two muscle groups rather than just placing all the force of climbing on the shoulders. I mean, would you push a dead car out of the middle of the street by yourself, or would you ask a friend to help? Two muscle groups, better than one. This is important because our external rotators help stabilize the shoulders, especially when the shoulders are at or above the 90 degree position. We obviously find ourselves in that position oftentimes with climbing and the external rotators are very important for that stability. Super quick side note, I mentioned that, you know, our external rotators are really important in that 90 degree position. So I also like to sometimes throw in just that rotation here with the band. If you already got it, you can do this as well through here to get you even more primed and get those external rotator groups ready to go. Warm up number three, general neurological and physiological priming, i.e. recruitment pulls. Now, before you hop on your project or start climbing, it's important to load the tissue in a similar manner as you will be when climbing. So find a ledge, AKA a rock, or use a portable ledge or whatever you have available to you and go into the different hand positions you need to prepare yourself for the climb you're about to hop on. That could be half crimp, open hand, or even full crimp. Or if you got a little extra time and wanna maximize your warm up in order to minimize your injury risk, go through all the positions. For each grip position you do, Pull as hard as you comfortably can for five seconds, let off and rest for one second, and then repeat four more times. Perform multiple sets of this, about three to four sets before you climb. If your climb has more crimps on it, make sure to at least get two or three sets of that crimp position. So these pulls can be done with both hands together or one arm at a time. I recommend doing one arm at a time simply because it's more realistic for climbing and it lets you hit like your max contraction because you're likely not able to pull your body off the ground. Whereas with two hands, if you're on that ledge and you can pull your body off, you're not pulling like that max contraction if you can easily pull off the ground. So why recruitment pulls? Well, because Emil said I get to choose three things and I really like these, so they're going in there. So you'll notice with these recruitment pulls that you'll get stronger with each set. Think about that for a second. Why would you wanna pull on your project when you can't even pull at even close to your full strength on the ground? You're just asking to injure yourself by entering into your climbing session without being fully prepared. Have you ever worked on a move where like the first few attempts, uh, it felt really hard or nearly impossible, then all of a sudden on the next try, boom, it just goes and you're like, why was that such a struggle earlier? Well, one reason is that your body may be making small adjustments in the way you hold onto that hold, but another reason is you're doing exactly what recruitment pulls are trying to emulate. You're improving the nerve conduction velocity, improving the strength of the motor units, and warming the tissue up. This is gonna tell your brain, hey, it's okay to hold onto this. I realize it's actually not gonna hurt us. Whereas in the beginning, your brain wasn't so sure, hence why you were letting go so quickly. So recruitment pulls will accomplish just that. They'll load the tissue in a way to tell your brain it is okay, i.e. it's not gonna injure you. You can, of course, do more to whatever suits you, but those are three necessary items to incorporate before climbing. What are your favorite additional things to do before climbing? Share with your comments below. All right, until next time, train, climb, send, repeat. All right, so super bonus extra credit round. If you did one additional thing, you know, we got the upper extremity and the hands, the forearms pretty nice and warmed up. We didn't touch too much on the legs. So aside from just that good warm up hike into the crag, I would recommend doing Nordies or Nordic hamstring curls to get those hamstrings nice and fired up. That way you're ready to do those heel hooks so you don't get any like strains or cramps or anything. And you just have better control of your footwork when you get on your climb. Wait, was that good or should I do it again? The wink was good. I'm just a natural winker, I guess. <laughs> Warm up number one, finger tendon. Warm up number one. <laughs>
Warm up number one. You know what it is. <laughs> You're smart. <laughs> Stay smart. Warm up number one. Warm up number one. Hand and forearm soft tissue and joint mobility. You can see. Now for the tendon gliding. You're gonna wanna do it right here. Just switch back and forth which hand you do it on. Unless you have like a Tesla with like super auto drive, autopilot, you fall asleep, take a nap car. Warm up number two. <laughs> Why we warm up? Like what's... Why do we actually need to warm up? So I just wanna go do some... Why we warm up? Like I just said it weird. Why do we warm up? Just a super quick final note for you who's wondering... Wow, I'm tired. I'm not tired. Oh, hey, you're still here. Jason, they're still watching. Oh, hey -o. Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um, like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude, so lame. I thought it was pretty good.